like you asked, that how many genders there are, we don't need to define that. There can be an infinite number of genders. It's all about what you define. I could go around wearing a dress if that's what I particularly wanted to but do. But are you still a boy then? Because you have a penis, I, I don't would assume. Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial topics. This week is our second installment of the Student Edition series, revisiting the topic of there only being two genders. Now, of course, the idea that there are more than two genders seems to be a hot topic these days. I think it's disrespectful to force somebody to use pronouns I think that are being so invented by the day. If I told, they're not being invented by the day, I don't know where you're getting that information. How many genders are there? How many I pronouns are there? I, there? I can't define the number of genders or the number of pronouns. Exactly, I'm sorry, because anyone can everyone... determine them. They are being invented by the day. People, we have to listen to the science. And the science says we're all on a spectrum. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. As always, sound off below your thoughts on the topic, what topics you'd like to see most in the future, and in this case, how you think the students presented their arguments. Now, it should be noted that, as in the last episode, uh, the UT Dean of Student Activities forbid us from having two students behind the desk at one time, hence the awkward workaround. Uh, time to meet the first two students, Sam and Parker. So I want to make sure that we understand kind of the general con, and I know, sorry, there's a lot of people, so you might not all be able to hear right now. Sam is on the uh, change my mind side of the fence here, so yeah. you know it's your position, your job to state your position in the affirmative and allow someone else to try and convince you otherwise. So it's kind okay. of a little bit of an attack and defend ideas, right? Yeah. Sam believes there are two genders and, sorry, what was your name again? Parker. Parker believes that there are more than two genders. So Sam, you know how to set this up. Yep. Invite him to... Hi, Parker. Hi, Sam. Hey, so I believe that there are only two genders and I'd be willing to have you try to change my mind. Okay. Parker. Uh, I believe that there are more than two, okay. and I'd be willing to change his mind. Cool. I think I can. I believe in myself. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Are we, so, are, are we supposed to start? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm already behind a rope. I feel like I've lost. Yeah. But uh, exactly. I'm going to say uh, the are, are not. It's like arguing something's existence. It's like arguing the existence of God. So I feel like um, gender expression is kind of a different thing where people can find their own communities of people who feel, feel similarly, who feel uncomfortable in their own skin, and it provides them an opportunity to, um, to blossom socially that otherwise they might not have if they were lying about their identity or if they continue to be uncomfortable in their own skin. Sure, okay, so I'm a believer that there's a difference between how you, f like, how you feel and what you actually are made up of, right? So I could, I could pretend I'm a unicorn and go to a unicorn's meeting you know, and, and feel like that's including me in a society, but that yeah. doesn't mean I'm a unicorn, right, obviously. Those people are called furries, they exist. So, and they're so, very happy with their communities. So, so based, based on science and bio science on biology and science, are those people unicorns, though? No, they're not, but I mean, you can't, that's something that can never change, you know, it's about your brain chemistry and about the way that you're made up. The, uh, the identity is a way of circumventing that. Like, if you, if you feel like you were born wrong, the, um, the opposing view would be that's just how it is and you're kind of stuck. But this new school of thought allows people to be much more comfortable with who they are and not have it be tethered to something that they can't change. So I guess, I guess what I'd say to that is um, I think there's a difference. <laughs> so can you give me the difference between just feeling like you're something versus actually being it? Um, like well, what makes me, if I feel like I'm a woman, what makes me actually be a woman versus just saying, hey, I'm a woman? Well, that's the debate, and I don't think, I don't think conflating um, uh, biology with that. There's a difference between uh, brain chemistry and biology. Like if you're uh, born biologically male, your brain chemistry might, uh, you might have more estrogen than the average male maybe, and you might lean towards one side a little bit more. And um, that, that can result- but, I mean, but genetically, are you still a man? Well. I mean, genetically, everyone's we, we genetically we only exist in two forms. But uh, I feel like um, ostracizing the argument to, you know, of course, of course, there are men and women, but we've created more schools of thought, more ways for people to express themselves physically. Okay, so so if we're creating them, that means that they're not natural, correct? Not natural. If, that, if they're man-made, that means they're not natural, right? That whole not natural thing brings don't look up. To, don't look to me. This is between you two right now. I know, but it's 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 yeah. usually you. I don't like this gimmick, and I will not be watching this video. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Apologize sorry, about look, that, man. I, I love you. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. Look, I don't mean to be crass. I don't mean to be rude. 
the bottom line is, uh, of course, biologically, the human animal, as do all other animals, they only exist in two binary forms. Genders, right? Yes. Okay, but so there are two genders then. That's what, that's what my stance is. You really backed me into a corner, my friend. This is, um, <laughs> this is more arguing that we've reached a place uh, mentally where we're expanding ourselves to more schools of thought that might result in interesting and new philosophies to move us forward and maybe have us be more harmonious sure. with one another. Sure, that, and that's fair. Like, that's something where I, I, I will say those are thoughts, right? You say those are thoughts and every, anyone can have thoughts have and thoughts. feel like how they ever want, right? But that's what they are. They remain to be thoughts. Yeah. There's a difference between having a thought about something and feeling a certain way and actually biologically, physically being that thing. Yeah. And so, so that's where you get into a kind of a, a gray area, right? It's like, what actually is something that I physically can be what, versus what can I feel like I am? Well, and what we're trying to say here is that there are two physical genders. There are two things that you can be. When you're born, you're either XX or XY chromosome, right? You're not going to be XY and then Zza Zing or whatever you, you can be, Zza right? Zza Zing. So, you know, the chromosomes. Those are the two things that you are, and th that is fact. I whatever get you that. feel like, no one's saying that you can't feel like whatever you want to be, right? Like, yeah. I, I'm not 21 years old and you know I'm, I might want to grab a beer every now and then but I can't identify as 21 can I uh, well even though that's what I feel like I feel like um, I feel like the part of the human experience is having things in your head that you create and manifest into real life so if you want to manifest your own identity or your own way of being perceived or perceiving yourself I think you should be able to do that without people saying that it's not natural or so, biologically against so the I have norm. a question for you so do you believe like since I'm not 21 if I want to go grab a beer down at the bar can I say I feel like I'm 21 so I can go down to the bar. No, but you can uh, buy a fake ID and for all intents and purposes you are 21. But that's not true. First of all, that's a crime. Second of all... Yes, it is a crime. Sec second of all, that's that doesn't change the fact that my cells aren't 21 years old, right? That, that, that my psyche isn't 21 years old. It's still not real is my point. So I can, I can do all these things to make myself feel like I'm something that I'm not. And sure, maybe I can feel that way, right? But at the do same... Do you see what I mean about the argument that we're having is real versus not real? Correct. Exists versus doesn't exist? Yes. But the argument of it's not real might stunt people's ability or... Um, or or openness to try and socialize with these groups or try to maybe explore their identity a little well, further. Can I, can I pause this sure. here for a second? Do you mind, is that, yeah, a, is that okay? Just because I know you have a time limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is kind of something that we run into a lot. I don't know who's, who's watching who feels like this has sort of gotten off into the weeds a little bit. I think that you're both agreeing on a lot more than you realize. It seems sure. to me... Yeah, I think not, we've agreed from the beginning. Well, it seems to me that if I'm not mistaken, you agree, you're saying that biological sex and gender are different from each other, correct? I don't think you can... Yeah, yeah, they're different. Sounds to me like you're saying that. It sounds to me like you're saying, uh, prove it. Well, well, I'm saying prove it, and I, uh, yeah, you can't biologically right, change I'll your gender. And, well, yeah, but I think... And that is why it's very hard for us to get permits. <laughs> so I think this is what's really important. This is one thing, too. You're very, uh, very logical, and I appreciate how articulate you are. But I think there can be a faster path to kind of sure. get into the point here. Okay? Sure, so, yeah. Why do you believe, because you were talking about not wanting to marginalize people and how productive it can be for these people to engage with their communities. Mm -hmm. I, think all, I think you would agree with that, that people should have community. We yeah. can all agree community is a good thing, we care Absolutely. about people. But since you, uh, you stated in the affirmative that biological sex and gender are different, what is that based on? And I think that's where you guys are missing each other a little bit. What is that based on? Uh, it's based on science, and I'm more arguing for sociology, I would guess. Okay. So biological sex and gender is based on science. Now, I can. would you like to follow up with this? Sure. So if we're talking about gender being based on science, when you are born, there are two chromosomes that define what gender you are, XX versus XY. That has nothing to do with the psychological how I feel in my brain. You cannot magically change your gender or your sex just based on the inherent cells and DNA that makes up your body. That is science. And uh, the, the common argument and the one that I was kind of flipping around is that gender and sex have kind of become separate in terms of their meaning as people have gone on. It's been reclaimed almost by What? For this installment, we'll ignore that guy because you can see the entire extended altercation with said knob by joining Mug Club at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. Not only do you get exclusive daily and extended content, but due to the demonization uh, of videos like these, it's the only way to ensure that this content continues. Ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. Get yourself a student discount while you're there. This is the problem. Is, is This is the kind of thing that often... Get, this is what people want in traditional media is someone yelling out an insult and people reacting. We just had 15, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes of two people having a conversation 
conversation. You're the outlier. You're the jerk. Okay. Yeah. All right, we have to wrap this up. And then I'd like to sit down with Sam. So, uh, um, in conclusion, I believe that uh, we should separate the word gender from the term biological sex because it's been claimed by people who want to use it in a different way, a more social way, in order to feel more comfortable with themselves. Okay. All right. Thank you, Parker. I'd like to sit with you, Sam, to talk yeah, sure. about it. Yep. Thank you, All Parker, right. very Thank much. You. Thank you. Appreciate Big it. Thanks, Thanks, Parker. I thought these students d did pretty well, and I wanted to see exactly what Sam thought along with offering some pointers of my own. Keep in mind the whole purpose behind Change My Mind and these student editions in particular is to help the students and you watching learn how to rationalize your own positions and engage in productive conversations. You know, things your professors are supposed to do. And one thing I'd like to kind of clarify here too, uh, something that we've discussed quite a bit, you know, this isn't a debate and what I want to encourage, how many people here have really learned the Socratic method in college? In high school, I did. In high school? high school? Show of hands, who here has actually been taught the Socratic method in college? How, how many people here have been taught the Socratic method in college or in university? Okay, seems like few people. Uh, the point of the Socratic method is not to debate, not to score points, but to actually examine your own argument and see if it comes to a logical conclusion. Quick question, how many people here can tell me what would constitute a bad argument? Invalid points. There's a couple, a couple points. Ad hominem, you know, there's, there's a couple rules that I think that sure. play out. Well, what you're presenting, so I heard ad hominem, appeal to authority. These are things we call logical fallacies. But before we get to that, and I do want to get to that in a second, a bad argument is an argument with a false premise or a conclusion that doesn't necessarily correlate to its premise. A, conclusion that does not prove its premise. That's what constitutes a bad argument. And so I think it's important to keep that in mind anytime you talk with professors, anytime you talk with other students, because as long as you keep that in mind examining, okay, is what they're presenting a good argument or a bad argument? Is the premise true? Do we agree on terminology? Do we agree on the data presented? Does the conclusion directly correlate and is it caused by what's been presented in this premise? And examine your own arguments that same way it necessitates a more productive dialogue. Now, I'd like to kind of go back through this here uh, sure. with, um, with Parker. Yeah. So, at one point he said, no, I don't believe, you said there are two genders. And he disagreed with you, yeah. right? And you went down kind of asking him some questions. Here's, I think, something that's pretty effective uh, when you're ask just asking a basic question in the outset. So, you can play Parker for a second. <laughs> I, I believe there are only two genders. I believe there are only, or, I'm Parker, right? So. Yes. I do not believe there are only two genders change my mind. Okay. It's not true, but... So I think, I think this is important right here. Before you go on, you kind of guys missed each other. What might be more productive when you start that conversation is he says, well, I don't believe... You've stated in the affirmative you believe there are two genders. Correct, yeah. He said, well, I believe there are more. But you let him go on and you got, let him go down a rabbit trail without defining it. So I would just say, okay, how many are there? And I'm no one ever answers that question. Yeah. So if someone is going to make a statement, again, we go back to sort of the idea of logical fallacies, burden of proof. Someone can't place the burden of proof back on you if you say, I believe there are two genders and this is backed by centuries of biological medicine science. Um, and they say, well, I believe there are more without stating in the affirmative with the same certainty how many there are. Well, isn't his premise that sex and gender are like Separate. separable? That's what, he, that's what he moves on to, sure. But it doesn't change the fact that one would need to answer Right. How many genders are there? It's so if you, it's not really fair if you say there are two and you're arguing with someone who says, well, there are more, you've put a number on it, right? Yeah. He hasn't. And looking back, you think maybe that would have helped you guys kind of see where you, you agree or disagree. Yeah, I think so. I think it would have gotten to the point a lot faster. I think that, um, at least in this particular issue, it's very easy to kind of get, I mean, you have the burden of proof, or right. they have the burden of proof. You're, you're the one with the solidified fact. And I think so. I think that if, if you, a lot of these people, if you can just, they have the burden of proof because they're the ones making these grand assertions. And so uh, the minute that you ask them to prove it, either they can or they cannot. And that's how the argument plays out. So, so how would you say this, was, would you say this exercise benefited you? In, Absolute, in absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think I think it's good. And I, I think for, especially at a campus like UT, which is so politically divisive and, and very violent, especially against the conservative population, I think it's good to at the very least, show some exposure for our arguments and the logic behind them. I appreciate that you did it so civilly and productively. I know you got a time Thanks limit. Steven, I appreciate it. Sam, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks for the time, Sam. Now it's time for two other game students. Colton and Gilbert, step right up. 
So you are obviously stating your position in the affirmative. Yes. And it's your goal to change his mind. All right. Right? Understand? Yeah. Okay. So Colton, go ahead. State your position in the affirmative. Uh, I would say that there are only two genders in the world based on scientific reasoning, um, genetics in particular. Um, I believe that uh, gender being not connected to biological reasoning would have to do with psychological differences. Okay. Can you, can you speak a little louder? Just going yeah. forward. Sorry. Okay. And you're welcome to welcoming someone to change your mind. Yes. All right, course. Gilbert, your floor, sir. All right. Once again, my name's Gilbert. I believe that there are more than two genders. And first of all, I'd like to agree with you. I'm going to start with an agreement that psychologically, there is a difference between gender and sex. Just, I believe we can agree that you're either born with a penis or you're born with a vagina, right? Yeah, of course. And that is your sex. Now to me, and to a lot of people I believe, gender is what you, what, what you, what you define yourself in society. Like it's not connected to, whether, to what you have in your pants. It's connected to how you present yourself to the world. See, I th that's where I think the, the argument first started like 10 or 15 years ago, right? Is that gender and sex, suddenly they, their definition switched from being the same thing to being sex and gender are different things. And I think my opinion would be that those two definitions shouldn't have been separated in the first place, where your, your opinion's different. Yeah. Um, so gender and sex have been separate things for more than just 15 years. There are several uh, Native American tribes where your gender was not associated with your sex. The idea, at least in Western culture, is fairly new when it's contrasted with the uh, Christian ideology of two genders, man and woman, all that. Yeah, which I think that's the predominant thought process and moral standing um, on that conclusion is Greco-Roman scientific reasoning is the basis for Western society. So that's where I would build that argument off of. I wouldn't call it scientific because like I said, it's what you believe. It's, it's purely societal, so the definition of gender. How would the scientific reasoning differ a gender from another other than psychological? Like what physical evidence could there be? There doesn't, when it comes to gender, the physical evidence is how people present themselves. We don't need to have labels because, like you asked, that how many genders there are, we don't need to define that. There can be an infinite number of genders. It's all about what you define. We don't need to say there are two, there are five, there are eight. That's unnecessary. It's how you present yourself. There's, there's more than just masculine and feminine. You, there, it's a spectrum of, of how you present yourself. Well, for instance, would a Tom girl still be a girl then? Or is she a boy? If she believes she's a girl, she's a girl. It, she can. But does that contrast with the fact that she has a vagina and two X chromosomes? Not necessarily. We're conflating the idea of masculinity and femininity with what you have in your pants, which isn't necessary. You can present yourself any way you want. I could go around wearing a dress if that's what I particularly wanted to but do. But are you still a boy then? Because you have a penis, I, I don't would assume. I, I don't wanna... so, and no, se Sexually, like scientifically, I still have a penis. That yes. makes me a male, sex. Yes. The gender doesn't need to have a label on it. Okay, so then we can agree that if you have, say, an X and a Y and you have a penis, you're a male no matter what but you yes, could identify as something else. Yes. You so, can identify as whatever you want to identify with. Yeah. Like, you don't need, you, nobody needs to conform to anything that anybody else wants them to conform can to. I, can I pause for a yeah. second? Of course. So since your job here is to change his mind, what I've heard you say is that gender is separate from sex. Yes. What I've heard you present is uh, scientific arguments and you use Greco-Roman reasoning as basically the basis for Western society and culture, which would tell me that yes. you believe that's a value. Yes. That you value Western society. Yes. Okay. You're telling him that there are non-Western societies that may not share those values yes. and saying that you can identify or present yourself as any gender that you would like. Yes. Doesn't seem to me like that's going to convince him of anything or change his mind. So let me do this. Let's present your kind of closing arguments on this topic. If you wanted him to see one uh, particular facet of your point of view, what do you think would be the most convincing argument you could make to someone who believes there are only two genders? That gender and sex are not the same thing. 
that that's that's the basis of my argument and a lot of arguments and i hope that's what other people will see that we don't have to assign societal roles to what you have in your pants okay and then colton what would be your closing argument or statement there well um i like to point out for example like um i believe it's the ceo of ford industries is a woman i don't think there's any particular i think we've come far enough in a society that we can let anybody do any societal role no matter what's in their pants it doesn't matter on what their gender identity is and in sure. fact that would somewhat be sexism if you think about it if you had to be a woman to your gender had to be a woman to do some societal role that would be against reasoning good cover you guys feel like this is a good conversation yeah. yeah good thanks colton and gilbert now it's almost as though these two different conversations mirrored each other exactly in execution let me know if you've spotted the trend yourself comment below Okay, so we initially planned this outing to be exclusively between students, but the students themselves voted. Who would like to see the next one uh, be, again, with two students Woo! conversing? Yep. Okay, who would like the next one to be me sitting down with somebody? And I decided to have one more traditional sit down on the topic of gender with UT's Lucas. Right, what was your name, sir? I'm Lucas. Lucas? Pleasure. Nice to meet you, Lucas. Could you mind scooching in a little bit? Yeah. All right. So, Lucas, I, uh, I believe that there are uh, only two genders. We've been talking about this all day. Um, that one's pretty straightforward. Changed my mind. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think first and foremost, the largest question we've been asking today, do you think that sex and gender are two separate things? No. No, okay. So in my view, I see sex is the biological factors that differentiate men and women. On the other side, gender is more the social and cultural aspects and factors that contribute to how people behave as male or female. Okay. And that's built up through how parents and other important individuals in our lives from childhood build up and influence our behavior. So I think, especially in today's day and age, gender is more not just biological factors that define who we are, mm -hmm. it's something that's changing and it's how we identify someone as either male or female. And uh, on what is that based? The idea that gender and sex are separate. Where does that come from? Sociology. That's, uh, it's one of the main topics. It's one of the main, like, um, I guess you could say fields of research, how they identify the difference between gender and sex, basically. So okay. I'd say sociology mainly. It's also some psychology, but... Okay, sociology. Yes. How long would you say that's been the case? I'd, I mean, personally, in my view, I think it's been a constant case, but I think especially now, it's a topic that's gaining a lot more Where does it stem attention. from in Western society? I guess is my okay. question. Um, stem from... Okay, so let me... Like, yeah. yeah, before we get there, <laughs> yeah. uh, let me present... Yeah, biological sex and gender have been um, inextricably intertwined sure. for pretty much the entirety of Western civilization. Absolutely, yeah. So when I ask you, what is this based on, you just presented an argument that gender and sex are different. Now, I want to make sure that I understand. You said that's based on sociology. Yes. Yes. Not based on science or medicine. Uh, my point of view is based on science and medicine. Right. Um, and the point of view that you're presenting, the reason I ask you is it's very important. This is a very new idea. Mm, yeah. So the idea that um, gender, you know, or they're transgender, the idea that gender should be separated from sex, that came with uh, um, Simone de Beauvoir in the 1940s. This doesn't come from science. This right. comes from postmodernist uh, existentialism. Mm -hmm. And even then, it was presented in the idea of a binary, that a male can have more female qualities or a female can have more male qualities, but it's a societal construct. You go all the way through the John Money study. Um, you really don't get to Judith Butler until the 1980s or 1990s who had this idea that gender was based on a spectrum. Again, none of this is based in science. None of this is based in medical data and or I agree. history. It's definitely, a more, it's definitely a much newer idea and topic. But right. I think also, though, with, when it comes to, uh, what was I going to say? gender on the, on that topic. I think you have to consider though a lot more people how it's bringing to attention. So how would you identify, so someone who was born intersex, yeah. someone who was born with the genitalia of both men and women, mm -hmm. how would you identify their gender? Well, first off, there are a couple of things there, uh, if, if I may address it. A lot of intersex people are be, uh, uh, born masculine or feminine, or feminine. male or yeah. female, with, for example, some extra breast, breast tissue, or a woman might have an enlarged clitoris. They're less than 0.01% of population Earth uh, intersex. Uh, and by the way, not all those people consider themselves transgender, LGBTQA. So you'd a say lot it's of them just don't. a mutation? Well, I would say it's an anomaly. It's a medical anomaly. Okay. For example, um, what do we teach children? How many fingers or toes do people have? We teach them five and ten on each yeah. one. Well, yeah, five and ten. That's <laughs> okay. Ten. Not, I'm not going to try and catch. Five or ten. We don't, why don't we teach them twenty? 
because the major, like you said, the majority of us, right. we have the same. Yeah. How many hearts do people have? We all have one. Okay, we all have one. Good. So we agree on that. So um, if we can put this extreme example off to the side for a second, that's not how we define sure. male and female according to but biology. I mean, at the same time, that's the same argument as saying. So how old are you? I'm 32. So you can't identify as saying you're, I, I identify as 45. Age is just not something that's changing in society. It's the same argument in saying, so maybe a hundred years from now, somebody might argue that I can identify as 50, but today's day and age, gender- People are already arguing that. Exactly, but that's not something that we're already recognizing in society as something on a basis for argument Why like not? this. Because we just haven't reached that point in society. But and you think we will? I do think that we will. And so I, we think trans ageism is a valid socio. No, I, don't, I definitely do not agree with that on the, on Why that not? basis. Because for me, I, when we start learning about certain things in classes like gender, sex, I think it's a viable issue in which we can identify. And people who identify. Well, why? I guess my question here is, I was going to ask, you know, if you're going to uproot all of modern Western civilization, right? Male, female, male, female roles, biology, sex. Right. Gender was not uh, removed from sex until very recently. We both agree on that. Definitely, it used to be yeah. really a grammatical term. Yeah. It still is in a lot of the Romance languages. Um, what is the net benefit to completely removing uh, gender from sex? Why do that? Oh, I don't think there's, I definitely don't think there's a net benefit to completely removing them. I just think we need to recognize that there is, and I, the way we identify it and interpret it, I think that there is cause for understanding the difference therein. And that there are certain people who, and in society, many people actually, who would like to have that recognized. And I do think that there is some evidence on a scientific basis, or as well as sociological studies, that does give cause for understanding this and interpreting it. Uh, how so? Well, in, I mean, in society, with the people that identify as different genders, right? And, they, I mean, it's on one, on one side, it's a manner of being able to consider, like, acceptance in society, feeling comfortable with oneself. But at the same time, we can still identify them as how you want to identify, but also letting them to identify themselves in the way that they would like to be. So you're saying it would be okay if someone identifies, a male who identifies as female, you wouldn't have a problem with someone like me misgendering them using masculine pronouns? No. I, I mean, and, and okay. in classes, we recognize this all, oftentimes. Our TAs will sometimes ask us, I mean, we want to, everyone has to go around, identify your pronouns. And I think that in, oftentimes that's unnecessary. Why? Like, because we all recognize, I mean, we're, we all want to be respectful, right? Sure. I think in most cases, people aren't trying to intentionally offend. But why isn't students. it necessary? Why didn't you ask me my pronouns before you sat down? Because I don't, in, for, especially for a discussion like this, it's unnecessary. Why? There's an unnecessary, because it, for you especially, I think we can uh, interpret. Is that an important thing for you to identify your pronouns? Sure. Okay. So Let's then, say I do, but you made a judgment that it might not be important to me. Right. Why? Well, because in most cases, the people that do genuinely care a great deal about it, that is something that they will present to you up front and in the, in the beginning. And that was something that... Well, you just said you went around in a classroom and asked people their preferred pronouns. Why didn't you do it no, with I, me? Why did you, what did you assume I am? I, I assume you're male, yes. Why? That's an assumption based on the fact, well, from what I know of you already. Okay. So I have pre-knowledge of that. But in the, my example, what I was stating is my TA, for, they said, let's, they instructed us to go around and go. So basically, like, it's just the direction of the TA. They wanted us to all identify our pronouns. Okay. So it's, it's so, yeah, situation. I, I'm asking you, you know, for example, it's a very new concept. Definitely. You weren't necessarily super familiar as to where it came from. Hopefully, maybe that's helped. Look, I, would, I would encourage you to read some, to Simone de Beauvoir and Judith okay. Butler quite a bit. Um, and read up on the twin study mm. by uh, John Money. Um, but I do think it's important if you're going to say, okay, you've learned this from your sociology professors. Sure. On this scenario, that's kind of an appeal to authority fallacy yeah. a little bit, where you're saying, well, my professors say this. So I usually don't like appealing to authority, but um, in this case, I will. Every doctor in the history of ever, mm. right? Every yeah. biologist in the history of ever. Kinesiologists would also have to look at the difference in, in uh, the male and female body. So if we're going to appeal to authority, I certainly would appeal to science and observable uh, mm. medical data. I asked you what the net benefit is, and you said there isn't necessarily one. Well, I think there's a huge net cost. There's a huge net cost if you say, well, there aren't only two genders. Now there's a burden of proof on you. How many genders are there? I, well, as I said, I believe that there are three genders. Okay. I think there are male, female, and intersex. I don't think that we can consider just intersex as a mutation. I don't think that's... Okay. I don't think that's fair, and especially in our modern society, I think it's something that we should consider. But I can put a number on it. So three. Something to so put you wouldn't consider it. transgender a gender? You no. wouldn't consider non-binary a gender? No, I don't think there's enough evidence yet enough to support that. 
Okay, so you really, so you really just believe that there's a third gender for people who are born intersex. Exactly. Yeah. Which I think actually it's we would fair, both agree. Yeah, yeah medically, um, but that's a bit different from what your sociology professors would be well, professing. Yeah, I think it was actually it's actually the textbook. Yeah. But, oh really? Yeah. How many genders do they say there are? Um, they don't put a number on it, and that's why <laughs> I don't think there's evidence enough for it yet. So once once you can put a number and quali quantify these things, I think you can start doing a great deal more research and actually get behind it. Okay. Once, once they have something you can get behind specifically. So what, how would you identify someone who, let's say, I, says that they are trans, male to female trans? I mean, in how? I mean, what do you mean though? Internally, or how would I present myself to them? Because it's different, right? Yeah, I'm not saying you would insult them. Yeah. But do you <laughs> see that person as a female? Or do you see that person as a male? I, in my view, I just I see them how they want to be interpreted. Whether or not I actually de real recognize them or in internalize them as being male or female, that's different. But I will always like try, you make an effort to internalize and present them how they want to be seen. So if someone who is, say, a transgender female presents themselves to me as a female, I will internalize that as they are female. I may okay. also think and like consciously think about them as... But don't, you don't believe that those should be recognized? N not legally. necessarily. No, not no. legally, no. No, okay. So on a driver's license, it would still say male or female? Yes. Okay, well, there you go. We agree on yeah. mo most, most everything yeah, as far on as the legally, Yeah. Okay, sure. thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. It was very productive. Thank you, sir. Well, there you have it. Two full productive conversations between students and one between a student and myself. Let me know what you think of the format, what you'd like to see next, and as always, be prepared to rationalize your own position. See you next time. Okay, if you like this video, you know, you watch videos on YouTube. If I were Jimmy Kimmel, if I were Stephen Colbert, or Trevor Noah, I would tell you to subscribe. But I have no corporate overlords who demand that I do this demeaning promo. I do the demeaning promo because I choose to. Subscribe or hit the notification bell because I need you. I need you, please do it.